In this lesson, we will take a look at a device called the Operational Amplifier. This device is definitely revolutionary and offers us a ton of functionality for such a simple idea. The first operational amplifiers came around in the 1940s, but it was not until the 1960s that they were miniaturized into the integrated circuit style that we see today. The reason we like operational amplifiers, or op-amps for short, so much is that they can be used as comparators, peak detectors, analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, and much more. Let's perform a quick experiment to see what the op-amp can do. From the parts kit, we'll need a 9-volt battery connector, 9-volt battery, 741 op-amp, 3 1-kilo-ohm resistors, a 5-kilo-ohm trim pot, 2 red LEDs, jumper wire from the wire kit, and a screwdriver for varying the trim pot. This circuit is a little more complicated than the previous circuits that we've built, so feel free to use this schematic to build it while following along. To build the circuit, first I'll place the op amp in the middle of the breadboard. The 5 kilo ohm trim pot will go next to the op amp. We'll use two wires to connect the outer two pins of the trim pot to plus 9 volt power and ground. Then, the center pin of the trim pot will connect to pin 3 of the op amp. Next, with a gray wire, we will connect pin 4 of the op amp to ground, and with a red wire, we will connect pin 7 of the op amp to power. Now, we'll connect two resistors to the op amp's pin 2. One resistor goes from plus 9 volt power to pin 2, and the other resistor connects from pin 2 to ground. This resistor formation is called a voltage divider. The final resistor will connect to the op amp's output pin 6, and then two LEDs will follow that resistor connecting over to ground. With the circuit built, let's connect the plus 9 volt battery and test it out. Use the screwdriver and vary the trim pot. What you will find is that there is a distinct location on the trim pot that turns the LEDs on and off. Let's connect a digital multimeter to the op amp to get a better look at what is happening. As we turn the trim pot, it outputs a larger and larger voltage to the op amp. When it reaches a certain voltage, around 3.6 volts, the LEDs turn on. Once you've found that voltage, you can easily flash the LEDs on and off by moving the screwdriver back and forth, which increases and decreases the input voltage to the op amp from the trim pot. This is the operational amplifier circuit symbol. Every operational amplifier has three main connections. The non-inverting input signified by the plus sign, the inverting input signified by the minus sign, and the output. Two voltage supplies signified by V plus and V minus can be seen. These are also called power rails. The comparator circuit we just built was inputting 3.5 volts into the inverting pin and the trim pot was inputting a changing voltage between 0 volt to 7 volt to the non-inverting pin, and we verified this with the digital multimeter. The comparator acts in a super simple way by looking at the two inputs. If the non-inverting voltage is larger than the inverting voltage, then the output is the same as V+, the positive power rail. However, if the non-inverting voltage is smaller than the inverting voltage, the output is the same as V minus, the negative power rail. This example of a comparator function is a huge leap forward in many ways for electronics. However, it is the amplification functionality that the op amp is most famous for. So let's take a quick look at that. Many times in electronics, we are sending signals from one destination to another. But by the time they reach their destination, they are very weak and we need to increase them back to their normal level. Think about your voice. If you scream really loud, your voice can definitely be heard from 10 meters away. But it will be softer at 50 meters, and at 250 meters away, your scream will be silent. 
The easy solution would be to have someone repeat your scream every 50 meters. In electronics, we use very much the same idea by means of operational amplifiers. A signal received by the op amp can be amplified back to its normal level and transmitted further through your circuits. Here are two types of circuits that use op amps, the inverting amplifier and the non-inverting amplifier. Both circuits use a single op amp and two resistors. This means that they offer a very easy way to amplify signals and with today's cheap and high quality op amps, they can be found everywhere in electronics. Let's dig a little deeper into the theory of op amps and take a look at what amplification actually means in the context of electronic signals. If you have a simple signal like this and you amplify that signal by a factor of five, the same signal would look like this. Notice how much larger it is and naturally that signal will be more powerful. This same idea is used for electric signals that are amplified by op amps. If an electrical signal like this is input into an op amp configured to amplify by 5, the output signal is naturally 5 times larger. But how do we configure the amplification factor of an op amp circuit? The amplification factor of this op amp circuit is determined by the two resistor values. So if we choose 1 kilo ohm for R1 and 5 kilo ohm for R2, the amplification factor is R2 divided by R1, or 5. This design method is true for both inverting and non-inverting op-amp circuits. Operational amplifiers are typically never used by themselves. It is much more common to combine them into an integrated circuit like on this toy RC car. This chip actually has two operational amplifiers as part of the whole IC package. Amplifiers are an integral part of almost all RF electronics. They can be found in cell phones, GPS devices, computers, radios, and tons of other electronics. A very common use of amplifiers is for wireless signals being transmitted or received. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Next time, we will learn about the digital heavyweight of old, the 555 timer which gives us a quick and easy way to build an A-stable oscillator.